Hi there, this is uh, Pastor Sherman Burkhead, and this is Grace and Truth, a devotion that's meant to encourage you and challenge you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ through a time in the Word and a time in prayer. And it is uh, another nice day outside. It is warm, but it's not, again, like crazy hot. Um, certainly enjoying um, the summer weather, uh, though I could certainly stand for it to be a little bit cooler, but um, no reason to complain about it. But in that, um, you know, having sunny days is always something to be grateful to God for. And as always, I'd like to just kind of begin um, uh, talking about gratitude. Uh, and I think that we can, hi, hi Christy, good afternoon. Um, I think we can spend a lot more time thinking about the things that we're grateful for. God has blessed us in so many ways. And I say that all the time. And the reason why I say it all the time is because I think it's something that's easy for us to lose sight of. Um, you know, we get a flat tire, you know, and our day turns bad. Somebody like confronts us with something at work that we don't like. We see something on social media that gets our blood pressure up. We, you know, I mean, there are lots of reasons and things that happen to us that can really f cause us to focus on the negative. And we should have to deal, and we do have to deal with those things. And sometimes things are really, really hard. But the fact of the matter is, is no matter what happens, there is a lot that we, all of us individually have to be grateful for. Like for instance, uh, if you woke up today and you're alive, that's a lot to be grateful for. If all of your loved ones, the people that you you know care about, your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, aunts and uncles, grandparents, you know parents, if all of those people um, in your life woke up this morning and they are alive, then you have infinitely more to be grateful for than you actually deserve. And, and, and the truth is you don't even control that. That's the thing. God has decided to give you that gift once again today. And so there's a lot to be grateful for. And the thing that I'm particularly grateful for, um, just thinking about everything that's happening around us and, and, and the things that, that we've been dealing with as a culture and as a country, um, the thing that I'm really grateful for is the community I live in. Um, we live in a very small uh, community out here in the Mojave Desert. Uh, we're geographically isolated from uh, from just about everyone. Um, uh, I mean, you have to drive, I think, you know, 30 minutes to get to Mojave, um, 45 minutes to get to Lancaster, 45 minutes to get, get to Barstow. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is we don't even have traffic, you know, lights here yet. Uh, I don't know if that's coming anytime soon, but uh, the reality is, is we're geographically isolated, but also we're socially isolated in a sense that um, because we are a small community and everybody knows everybody, there's just certain things that, that we've been able to, um, to avoid, I guess. You know, the fact of the matter is we do have our problems. We do have issues in our community. There is still the issue of crime and the social, the the uh, physical isolation certainly creates issues with law enforcement getting here. But the truth is, we have people that care about each other in this community. Everybody knows each other and looks out for one another. And the fact that you know we have been isolated from things like the protests, uh, we've been isolated from from the violence that we see in the big cities. I mean, crime is on the rise, but the reality is is that people really pay attention to one another here. And 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 as we have seen on multiple occasions, this community rallies together. Uh, when someone experiences a great loss, we see this community, people in this community rise together uh, to love on each other and to support each other and to help each other. Over and over and over and over again, we see that in this community. We, see, I mean, how many kids in this community have been able to play sports because somebody else pays for their uh, for their entry fees? How many kids have gotten free shoes and and, and equipment to be able to um, uh, to play sports? How many kids have gotten school clothes from the B Cop organization because people pour in those resources to make that happen? Again, I am super grateful for this community, um, and I'm grateful for the people that are part of this community. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that these are some of the most loving people I have ever met in, in my life. Now, we've been here in Boron for, uh, for the better part of 10 years. Uh, actually, it's been 11 years, but um, these are some of the most loving people we've ever met. And, and, and the thing is, is even the people who have differences will still come together and help one another. And so in that, that's what I'm thankful to God for. I'm thankful to God for this community and those that live in this community. I'm also thankful for you, those of you who are outside the community, um, but you just not happen to live here right now. Uh, with that being said, um, what are you thankful for? 
And, and, and I ask that because I certainly want to hear because it encourages me, but I really want you to spend some time thinking about it. What is it that you're grateful for? And, and you know, I mean, because the reality is there's a lot for you to be grateful for. Uh, but anyway, you can reach out to me at fbcboron at gmail.com and send me your thoughts on that. Or you can call me here at the office at 760-762-5149. I would certainly love to to hear from you and and what you think about uh, your what, what you're grateful for. I would also um, love to to hear from you about your questions about theology, about uh, um, about what it means to to be a Christian, and um, uh, I'd certainly love to know your questions about the Bible. And and I certainly would love to talk to you if you are if you have questions of what it means to be a Christian and how you can actually learn to follow Jesus Christ. Again, you can reach me at fbcboron at gmail dot com or at seven six zero seven six two five one four nine. I would just love to to have a conversation with you. Now, with that, uh, today's text I want to look at is Mark chapter eleven verse twenty. It's a text I talked about a couple weeks ago on Sunday, um, but I think it bears repeating. Given the context that we live in right now, um, I don't think we can we can talk enough about this. And so, again, Mark chapter eleven, and we're going to be looking at verse twenty five, and it reads, "And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone." so that your Father, who is also in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Um, <laughs> this is such an important text for us um, today. And, and just going to give you a context, this is the part of, of, of Jesus' ministry where he has declared himself to be the Messiah. Um, he has now cleansed the temple. He has cursed the fig tree. He has pronounced judgment against Israel. And then suddenly he's teaching his apostles about prayer. And he says, effective prayer requires two things. Number one, it requires faith that you must absolutely believe, right? And with confidence, um, when you pray, you must, you must pray confidently that God hears you, right? And that God is going to do what is right for you. Right, and that you should pray confidently. The second thing, and this is the part everybody overlooks, including me. Right, the second part of this is, is, is forgiveness. The second component to effective prayer is forgiveness. He says, forgive. Right? When you stand praying, forgive. So here's the thing: is if you are coming to God asking for him to bless you or to heal your mom of cancer or to, you know, make something go better at work or, you know, protect your children, right? You are hampering your own prayer life if you walk in unforgiveness. Do you do you realize that you are in your own way because you're refusing to forgive someone else? This is such an important part of the Christian life because the fact of the matter is is we have no right to withhold forgiveness from anyone, right? Now, let me let me be really, really clear when I say forgiveness because a lot of people take this the wrong way. When I say forgiveness, if somebody hurts you or does you wrong, when you forgive them, what you're doing is you're releasing the debt. You're letting it go. You're not expecting to be paid back. You're not expecting for them to make it right, right? You're not holding it over their head anymore. You're not carrying around bitterness anymore, right? This doesn't mean you have to be best friends, doesn't mean you have to go to lunch together every Friday, right? Doesn't mean that you have to allow them to uh, allow a certain person to like to walk all over you. Doesn't mean this is a call for you to be a doormat. Doesn't mean that you have to answer every one of their whims. Doesn't mean that you have to do whatever they ask. That's not what forgiveness means, right? This is the thing that we have to be really, really clear about because because just just the same way as as people confuse love. One of the confusing things that we see in our culture right now is how people take love and they conflate it and they confuse it. For instance, there are people who will say that, that if you don't agree with me about my view of something, then you must hate me, right? If you don't agree with my lifestyle, whether it's, you know, sexuality or whatever, then you must hate me because you don't agree with me. See, there's a mis there's a conflation about love. Another conflation about love that people are doing right now is like, if you don't want to do things the way that I think you should do them, then you don't love me. If you don't want to wear a mask, then you don't love me. You don't care about me. So the, what happens is there's there's this, this misunderstanding where we're conflating things. We're actually misunderstanding, you know, what the real issue is. And it's the same thing with forgiveness. Forgiveness does not mean that you have to be a doormat for somebody. It doesn't mean you have to let people walk on you. It doesn't mean you have to like even hang out with someone. 
Forgiveness, in essence, when you forgive someone else, is you were letting go of the right for you to get the, the score settled. You were letting go of vengeance that you're trying to achieve. You're letting go of the bitterness that you're holding on to towards someone else. In essence, when somebody wrongs you, there's a debt that in essence they owe you that they're never going to be able to pay back, right? Forgiveness is letting go of that debt. Now, why in the world would you ever let go of that debt? Because that's exactly what Jesus did for you, right? That's exactly what God has done for you. He has forgiven you an incredible debt, a debt that's greater than you can possibly imagine. In fact, Jesus tells a parable about this particular issue. He says, he compares it to a king who had somebody that was in his debt for millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? And and, and the king forgives that debt. And then the servant goes out and then he's holding somebody accountable for like a $10 debt. That's blatant hypocrisy. That's the point. Why should you forgive? Not because the other person deserves your forgiveness, but because that's what Christ has done. And if you're a follower of Christ, you're supposed to be like him. That's the point. We're supposed to follow him, to be like him, to be his disciples. And and, and, and Jesus says, not only are you to forgive, but really lack of forgiveness hampers your prayer life. Because why would God hear your prayers when you're being hypocritical? you're asking God to do something for you. The God who has forgiven you of so much while you stand saying, but my standards, God, are higher than yours and I'm just not going to forgive that other person. The lack of forgiveness is just an incredible issue. It's it's a, it's it's an important issue in the local church. It's a local. It's it's it's, it's an important issue in the, the the church universal, the broader church. All right, we want to hold on to these things and hold people accountable and we want to be angry and bitter about them but but jesus said if you're going to pray then you need to let that stuff go and forgive just as the father forgives you now here's how we apply this now i listen i'm not going to take credit for this but i listened to uh, a youtube video i posted on my timeline by uh, a guy named uh, officer tatum um man the guy's really really sharp but he really kind of boils us down and you know and i think that this is the the rea- this is really the root of the problem that we're facing right now what's happening right now in the world around us is just a lot of unforgiveness he starts off by saying well wait a minute you know like when george floyd died you know um we should forgive him for the things that he did wrong because george floyd contrary to what a lot of people popular opinion is george floyd had a criminal history and was actually on drugs and resisting arrest when everything happened right the fact of the matter is, is he's done bad things to other people. And, and then we as Christians, what we should do is, it, this is, these are not my words. These are, these are the words from Officer Tatum. He says, we should forgive him, right? And pray that God would have, you know, that, that he would have had an opportunity before he died to receive, you know, the gospel like the thief on the cross. And, the, and, the, and that, that we would pray for his family, for, for comfort, right? And that we, would, we wouldn't no longer hold that against him. But then he turns, this is Officer Tatum speaking, he says, we should also forgive the officer who was kneeling on his neck. And, and I'm not going to tell you, like, that kind of kind of shook me up a little bit because I know this, but, but the fact of the matter is, it's the same thing. We need to forgive him too. All right? Now, it doesn't mean that he shouldn't be held accountable. I think he should be held accountable according to the law. But we should not then carry bitterness and hatred towards the man. Why? Because we need to forgive him. Because the debt that we have been forgiven is even greater than that debt, right? And and, I t- and I'll even take this back even further. I remember listening to a pastor, you know, a few years ago, uh, talking about, um, you know, forgiveness, and he talks about, you know, praying for your enemies, and he says, you know, that sounds good because how many of you people are, are actually praying for Osama bin Laden? And I just that that this this was years ago, and it really struck me, and I was like, I never think about praying for him. Right? Why would I pray for him? He's my arch enemy. He's the enemy of our country. He's somebody who, who's seeking the death of, of Americans. Why would I pray for that guy? But, but the, the biblical mandate is just that, right? And so I guess where I'm going with this is, is th- this issue of forgiveness is bigger than you possibly can imagine. Because what's happening right now is a distinct lack of forgiveness, the reason why people are dividing themselves against one another. Good afternoon, Julie. The reason why people are, are, are dividing themselves against one another 
is simply because of lack of forgiveness, right? There's a distinct lack of forgiveness. The reason why the riots happened is, is because there's a distinct lack of forgiveness for, for people's short, for shortcomings. And even now, what we see is in, in the world around us as we pursue this, this kind of cultural Marxist kind of, kind of dream that some of these people have, is this idea that you can never apologize enough. In fact, it's even infected in many of the church where people are even saying repentance isn't enough, right? To restore ra- racial reconciliation. What? You, what? Right? That the idea of forgiveness is not even in part of the conversation anymore. The fact of the matter is, is that's what we need to live. Why? Because we've been forgiven. That's the whole, that's our whole identity as Christians. I mean, how do we not keep this in the forefront of our minds? Our whole identity as Christians is forgiveness. You have been forgiven. Your greatest problem that you will ever face is that you're a sinner who has sinned against a holy, righteous, and just God, and his wrath and his judgment hangs over your head, and there's nothing you can do about it. You couldn't even fix it on your own, but God in his grace and his love not only forgave you, but took the steps necessary to make forgiveness possible. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty of your sins, right? So that you can be forgiven. Jesus Christ died in your place, suffering the wrath of Almighty God for you so that you can be forgiven. And you're going to stand now and say, Lord, I get that, but there's no way I'm forgiving this other person. There's no way I'm going to walk in forgiveness. There's no way. Lord, you don't know what they did to me. You know how bad it hurt me. That's a very, very definition of hypocrisy. And so here's the thing. If you're a Christian who's living in the love of God, and who's depending upon his forgiveness, that you're willfully walking in unforgiveness, you're walking in dangerous territory, right? The fact of the matter is, is you just can't live there for very long. The bitterness will consume you, number one. Number two, the call isn't to just be someone who has received forgiveness. The call is to be Christ-like, be a Christ follower. That means you must be like him. That must mean at some point you need to forgive. But how do we do that? (laughs) Right? Because, man, if there's something that's hard, sometimes that's the hardest thing to do is to forgive someone who's hurt us so bad because the emotional connection to our hurt is so palpable. How do we forgive then? Well, the reality is, is the forgiveness that, that was required to set you free required supernatural action that God had to intervene on your behalf. And it's the same here. What you need to do is you need to go and pre, you need to go to, to before God and you need to ask him, you need to ask him to give you the heart to forgive. That's how you're going to get there. You need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I know that you are calling me to forgive, but Lord, my heart is broken and I hurt deeply and my emotions are standing against me, but I know this is what I need to do. So I'm asking you, Lord, change my heart. And I'm believing, confidently believing that you will accomplish this in me by your power and your spirit, that you will give me the power to forgive. You pray that every day until that forgiveness takes heart, takes place in your heart. And then do the things that Jesus said in the meantime when he said to love your enemies. Now, to love your enemies doesn't mean you have to feel an emotional feeling. It's an agapeo kind of love, which means you love with your actions. You treat people with dignity and respect that maybe they don't deserve that. You actively help people that maybe don't deserve your help. You do things that demonstrate love, not actually feel love, but demonstrate love. Pray for those who persecute you. Right? Be good to those who mistreat you. You do those things actively, all the while praying, Lord, change my heart. Help me, Lord. Help me to forgive. That's how you live it out. And, and, and what I'll say is it's as simple as that, but it's not easy, and I know that. I'm a pastor, but I'm, I'm not superhuman. Right? But in that, I think we as Christians need to lead the charge here. This is how we change the world. This is how revival happens. This is how people get saved. This is how reconciliation begins, 
is that God's people actually live out the things that they say they believe. If we believe in Christ, we need to act like it, which means it starts with us. We need to walk in forgiveness. Unforgiveness will absolutely consume your life. And it will, as Jesus said, hamper your prayers. So let us come before the Lord and ask that he would give us all forgiving hearts today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your love. And I just pray, Lord God, you give us the ability to walk in forgiveness. Everyone that's listening now, Lord God, you'd give them this ability, whether it's live right now on Facebook or whether it's later on on YouTube, Lord, that you would give them a forgiving heart, that you would give them the ability to let go of the things that, that, that have been hurt. Doesn't mean that we have to be best friends. Doesn't mean that we have to like be, be anybody's doormat. Doesn't mean we have to allow people to walk all over us and doesn't mean we have to do everybody favors. It simply means that we just need to let go of the debt that's held against, that we're holding against someone else and that we would then begin to pray for them and actively love them the way that you love us. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would strengthen all of our hearts for this, that we would be the people that you're calling us to be. We'd walk in that this is what it means to be salt and light. This is the preserving influence that you want us to use, that we forgive other people, that people can see that visibly, that we are walking in the radical kind of justice that you were calling us to. The radical kind of justice that we're all called to is to let stuff go and to forgive and to be gracious. And, and as, as Jesus said, how many times are we supposed to forgive? As many times as necessary. We're to forgive over and over and over and over and over again. And the Father, that we would walk in this. And the Father, that all of us, Lord, I know that we're all going to struggle at some point on some level because there's somebody either close to us or far from us, somebody that has really, really dinged us good, somebody that's really just taken a chunk of our heart and really smashed it in pieces. And that, Lord, that it's going to be hard to let that stuff go. But, Father, I just pray right now that you just give us the ability to do that, that you change our hearts supernaturally to walk in this, to live like this, and to be truly Christ-like in this. That would be a reflection of you that, that, that the greatest atrocity that's ever happened is that the king, the Messiah, was, was, was killed and murdered on a cross. But you took that and worked it out for our good. That Jesus Christ lived the perfect life that we couldn't live and then died to pay the penalty of our shame so we could be forgiven. Father, help us to be mindful of that. Help us to walk in that and change our hearts for our neighbor. Change our hearts for those who, who have wounded us. Change our hearts for our enemies, Lord God. And we pray this in confidence and to the best of our ability, forgiving those who have transgressed upon us. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for this community. I pray your blessing over all of who are, who are listening today. And I pray, Lord God, that the revival would break out in our church, that revival would break out in this community and in our country, Lord God, that you would not be finished with our country, Lord, that there are people would repent and believe the gospel, that people would wholesale turn to you and believe, that we would be once again a nation that, that, that trusts in you and believes in you. I'm praying for that confidently, Lord God. But all this would be done according to your will and for your glory. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in that, please know that you are loved, that you are continually prayed for, and you are deeply missed. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. And for those of you who are in the community and who can make it, um, we're going to have Sunday service again uh, this Sunday. Uh, if you're you know, afraid absolutely please stay home uh, we certainly understand that if you're sick stay home as well uh, but for for those of you who can make it we would certainly ask that you join us uh, this sunday um we're we're going to celebrate the lord's table we're going to have the individual sealed little cups of juice and and the wafer um as we we celebrate communion uh, the lord's table or communion with one another um but anyways i look forward to seeing you guys uh we love you and uh, we'll talk to you soon grace and peace